Hello, everybody out there ready? Here we go. One. There you go. I found the new baby. That's the song for today. And that was written by Jack Palmer and Spencer Williams in 1926. It's a great jazz standard. Matter of fact, I played it yesterday at the gig I was doing. Uh, it was recorded by uh, Bing Crosby in 1945, Bobby Darin in 1960. Recorded by many artists, but invariably if you go to a jazz club well mostly dixieland you're going to hear that song played by the band so welcome to life after scientology where it's the only program on the internet or on tv where you come on expecting to hear an interview and the host comes out and plays some old standard maybe between 50 and 100 years old that's our cultural enrichment for this morning and let me get a little bit of business out of the way and we can get into this interview which I guarantee you is going to be of high interest. As a matter of fact, it's one of these interviews. I wish we hadn't do this. I wish we wouldn't have to do this subject, but we're going to do it. Anyway, <clears throat> any of you out there who would like to help in this program, you can become a patron. And I would appreciate it very much if you would. We have no sponsor. And because of that, we can conduct any interview we want to. We have that freedom. So if you want to help out in that, our endeavor here, become a patron. Just go to my website, therealronmiscavige.com, and it will show you how to do it. And number two, get other people to subscribe. I would like to have this program be about ten times as big as it is now. It is growing. And uh, I'd like to see it go faster, obviously, because we have an important subject that we want to bring out to the public, enlighten them, and expose this particular group that we're talking about. And uh, this morning, we're going to talk about coerced abortions. And I have with me an old friend and uh, a dear friend of many years who is my guest. And, of course, you see her already, so you know who I'm talking about. Karen De La Caria. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Ron. Hi. Hi. As I Hi, said, everybody, all Scientology watchers. Welcome. Okay. So now, I guess the only way to start this is to get right into it. And the main point we're going to start off with is a major point. And as I said, I, I wish we didn't have to talk about this, but this is a real fact. Karen, you got to talk about you and Heber, your former husband who wanted to have a baby and you had to actually get permission to have a baby. Now, all of you viewers out there, get what I'm saying. They had to ask permission to have a baby. We're not talking about China now. We're talking about the United States of America. And uh, Karen, why don't you just get right into it and tell us this story? Because it's, I hate to use the no, word fascinating, but I, it's just unbelievable. I, yeah. Scientology has very rigid rules on how you ask for something in terms of petition. But before I jump into the petition to have a baby, I have to give a little background data. In around 1983, management, especially David Miscavige, decided that there were going to be no more babies for staff members, absolutely none. So he had Guillaume Le Cerf, his little puppet ED Int executive director into more or less did whatever he was ordered to write an issue saying that babies were a distraction, 
they took you off production time, they were practically a nuisance, babies were not going to be part of the Sea Org, this was a dedicated group, and no more babies. So the scene was set before Heber and I wrote the petition that the cult of Scientology was anti-baby and going to be pro-abortion. I want to make it very clear that this show isn't to do with pro-life and pro-choice. This is nothing to do with a woman's options. This is coerced abortion. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you made that point because I don't want to get into the fact that we're taking sides in this. We're not. We're just reporting a particular scene that, as far as I'm concerned, is completely disgusting. It's pretty rough when management and senior authority order you to abort. This is no longer self-choice. This is not, this is not pro-choice. This is coerced yeah. and enforced. And for 30 years, women were put in buses, 12 at a time, two bus people were towed to different Planned Parenthoods. Can you, <laughs> Planned Parenthood was in the business of, with government aid, help seeing that babies, unwanted pregnancies were terminated, but even they were aghast. Can you just read, can you read the Planned Parenthood statement? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I have it here. And um, this is from Planned Parenthood in Riverside, California. And the person's name is Janet Hahn Alex. And she said, and what year was this, Karen, that this was said? Early 1990s. Okay, early 1990s. So, Janet Hahn Alex, Alex rather, from Planned Parenthood in Riverside said, I just felt that it was strange that they would all make the same decision independent of their individual circumstances. They had all made the decision to have an abortion no matter how old they were or how many children they had already had. We found that almost unbelievable. And when we started asking more questions in order to find out their individual motives, because we were suspicious, they stopped coming to us altogether. And that's what she said. Well, Janet, you were rightly suspicious. Yeah. They all gave a monolithic response, even those who had no children and had to abort, because David Miscavige and his gang of thugs ordered and enforced young girls at Ink Base in their 20s and 30s, all pregnant women, had to abort their babies. So let me backtrack to the petition that you uh, talked about. Okay. Um, the hammer came down. No more babies. This is this is really strange, you know. It's the complete opposite of the Mormon church. The Mormons want you to have 10, 12, 14. The Catholic church, too, yeah. want huge families with the thought that the next generation will get more Catholics, will get more Mormons. Yeah. Scientology is a love-only me cult. Meaning love, um, love only Scientology. Don't love your yes, children. Don't love, love your family. Love only me. Love only the cult. Love only the, the mother church, the hierarchy. Love only them. And to hell with loyalty and love to a marital partner or to kids. There, there really is intent, actual intent in the cult to sever any lines to family. That is, a, it's, it goes against the laws, it goes against natural law. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Ron, you, 
get, get, get a little personal here. You've never even seen your great grand. You have, how many children do you have? Me personally? Yeah. Four. Okay. And how many children have cut you off completely? Well, the only ones that talk to me are my son, Ronnie. And uh, there's one grandchild that talks to me. And I don't want to mention her name because I don't know if she's under the radar. So that's one other one. And then my granddaughter, Jenna, and yeah. her husband and their children, which is uh, Archie and Winnie. And my daughters, Lori and Denise, all of their children and their children, which is my great-grandchildren, none of them talk to me. So I've literally been cut off of the majority of my family. And of course, I enjoy the fact that I have some left, but it is beyond terrible to lose a family. It's just, it's unconscionable. I, you know, how do you do that? What state of mind must you be in in order to do that, to make somebody kowtow? And it didn't make me kowtow. Look what I'm doing. I'm doing interviews of people who have also been abused. So it has the opposite effect on people because you, you, you just can't kill a man and say, okay, that's what well, I'm using that rhetorically. I mean, you think you're going to beat him down and he's going to listen to you? Like hell he is. Some people will do what I'm doing. Not everybody, but I'm happy to do this. And guess what? If they hadn't cut my family off when I left, I wouldn't be doing this. It's it's absolutely terrible, Karen. I I don't want to go on and on about it. So continue on with your story there, well, because it, what is a bitter pill to swallow? It is. is. That you served them as a slave for decades. Twenty six and a half years in the Sea Organization, a, a total of about forty two years within the cult of Scientology. But 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 this is the bitter pill to swallow. After giving. That much of your life, your time, your energy, your effort, yeah. your attention, your loyalty, the end of the road is they take away your daughters yeah. and they punish you by destroying your family. This this is the this is the bitter pill to swallow. Yeah. I served forty years and when I had enough and left they turn my son against me. This is the maliciousness, the vengeance. There is no reward for your years of service or loyalty. Instead, they play out. Yeah, and this listen, if you, if, you, if I were to have spent, tw if, I, if I were to have spent 26 and a half years in the United States Marine Corps, I would retire with a very nice pension. I mean, that's the fact. After 26 and a half years with Scientology on staff, I had to escape in order to get out. Forget a pension. My wife and I planned an escape for about six months, and that's how we got out. We didn't say, okay, well, our time is up. Oh, great, here's your retirement pay. By the way, we paid in uh, all of your Social Security, which they didn't, you know, and I have very little to... To live off i'm not bitching about it but it, this is life this is my choice but um there is no reward at the end it's just continual service no reward and threats and punishment that's that's your life yeah go on so back to the story of heber and me we already had alexander and i thought ah, just one more child, one more, a daughter maybe. So we had to petition on bended knee and ask, could we, could we just have one more child? And we did this magnificent petition backed up with solid statistics. The cult runs like Coca-Cola or Baby Jones. It's just a matter of stats. How many, how many crates of Coca-Cola shipped to Disney before Thursday? To, like, it's raw, hard statistics. And I had these glorified graphs, statistical graphs, of how much I had done for years 
showing how much Scientology benefited from my hard work. And Heber did the same. It was quite stunning. The media shows he'd done, the this, the that. And we sent it in asking, begging to have permission to have one more child. Otherwise, we would be in the loop of enforced abortion if I got pregnant. Right. And, you know, <laughs> it came back denied. And Heba got slapped, bitch slapped, and reprimanded for being the president of the Church of Scientology International and having and having the gall and disrespect against management to set a bad example to ask permission to have one more child when the law with the hammer had come down, no more babies. So that's the story of the denied petition. Wow. And I'm sure it wasn't pleasant for Heber after that, because now once you have a mark like that against you, there's no forgiveness. You know that, Karen? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, there's no, you know, like in the Catholic Church, you go to confession, you get your sins off, and, you know, if you, if you die, you're going to go to purgatory and eventually go to heaven. But on something like that, you go to hell forever. Well, look at Heber's in the hole right now, isn't he? Well, Heber has had a stroke and is sort of immobilized. Oh, boy. Um, he can't even sit up straight. And that is a true testimony to 50 years in the cult with all their high tech and promises to, <laughs> to make you <clears throat> superior to normal human beings. That's what you're buying in Scientology. You're yeah. buying this, this fantasy they sell you of how they're going to take you higher make you wiser, make you more affluent, make you more a Nobel Prize winner or a Tom Cruise actor or something like that. This, this is all the baloney. And the reason that people are so aghast is that their highest level OT8s, 12 of them I know personally have had mental breakdowns. That means they've gone completely insane wow. after all the Scientology levels of giving them a million dollars and that's what happened. And if they don't go insane, these OTAs die of cancer, heart attacks, get diabetes, <laughs> and do do even do considerable amount of criminal acts as Tony Ortega slowly trickles out on his blog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the result of Scientology training and auditing, which you could call processing. But the, I think the main button that keeps people, maybe not to begin with, but then after you're in a while, because look, some of the introductory services that you do, I think are helpful. And I, this is, I've said it many times, but this is where they gain your confidence. And with those hooks in you, then you start accepting things later on that you might not necessarily agree with if they were told to you right at the outset. And you just say to yourself, well, I'll accept this. Well, after all the training that you do on a daily basis, two and a half hours a day, five days a week, you are then self brainwashed and then you think what you're doing is a crusade to help every man woman and child on the planet and because of that people keep on staying there and thinking it's going to be the next level where i'm going to gain these powers but meanwhile i can't desert this group and i have to keep on supporting it so we will pull off the ultimate coup which is clearing this planet and I, I had a guy write in uh, on one of my shows that said, with or without you, Ron, we are going to clear this planet. And one of my other listeners wrote, said his name and says, you know, so-and-so, you're insane. 
and it is like a, a form of insanity for them to think this, but you have people that stay there and keep supporting it, thinking that they're actually helping every man, woman, and child, and it's not happening. They refuse to look at any evidence to the contrary, which is tons of it. You just go on the internet and you can find out. You Scientology has been touting for 50, 60 years they're going to clear the planet. Let's put this into reality. Scientology does not have one village that they have so-called cleared. Not, never mind a K town. Or my state. Karen, they, I, I, I said last week, street, they, haven't e they haven't even cleared it. One street has never been cleared. <laughs> That's right. But one thing that you jogged my memory when you talked about wins in these intro, intro courses, one thing about Scientology is no matter what they say that looks so good on paper, you can find another Scientology reference that diagonally 180 degrees contradicts what is said here. This is a sort of schizophrenic doctrine. For example, the creed of the church, the creed, the biblical statements that they want the IRS to swap. Look, it's religious, here's the creed. The creed says man has an inalienable right to the creation of his own kind. Well, Inalienable, inalienable means that which cannot be taken away. Right, right. 30 years of abortions, coerced, yeah. enforced abortions. Yeah. But the creed looks so good. Inalienable right. Another thing in the creed, man has an inalienable right to talk freely, to think freely, and to speak freely. How does that work out in the Sea Org, Ron? <laughs> it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, you can't even talk about anything that went on in your auditing session to your wife or even the, a close friend. That would be a, a equivalent of a criminal act to do that. That's how that works out. You can't speak out freely at all. As a matter of fact, when we were going over this uh, yesterday, you come up with a, a, a guy who told his wife something in pillow talk. You want, why don't you tell that story? Because it, this illustrates this completely. Well, as I was saying earlier, the cult expects you to have 100% loyalty <clears throat> to them. Never mind the wife, never mind the children. And that is why husbands rat on their wives. They knowledge, they write these, these reports into the cult of the conduct of their own wife and vice versa. Wives report husbands, children report their parents. If a child walks in and sees their father looking at the internet at something, they will report that. And this is done over and over and over. Families snitch and rap. My own son, Alexander Chench, wrote rep reports on me. He grew up in that, and that's what he learned to do as a child, yeah. and he reported me. Now, uh, you, you, uh, yeah, I was giving you an example. A man in bed with his wife, this is pillow talk, this is in the privacy of their own bedroom. He uttered a statement that he had a fantasy of experiencing going to bed with two women and of course his wife furiously reported that whoa this was this was perversion and he got it cost him <laughs> oh it cost him forty fifty thousand dollars worth of confessionals asking him every which way but loose mm. about any perversion now he hadn't done anything he had never slept with two women he had never enacted this he had a flash thought and this is Scientology you can if you're a true believer 
and you're in epics and you're in force, you have to pay hard cash for having had a thought. Yeah. A thought that is not illegal criminally or civilly and wasn't something that was ever going to be acted out. It was a flash thought, but Scientology has learned to monetize your thinking. This is like Russian police KGB. This is like Chinese. Your yeah. thoughts on the government can be severely punished, even when you haven't done anything. Yeah. You talked about wins early on. You talked about wins in the early thing. One thing the cult does beat the drum <clears throat> and toot its horn is that they are masters of communication. They really, really want you to know how much they can improve your communication, raise your level. They, they have cute phrases like, communication is the universal soul. Really? <laughs> so while they preach and peddle this, nothing is more confined than your communication if you are on staff or seal, even public get penalized. You mm. can't say this and you can't say that and you can't talk about this. Everything is bottlenecked and shut down and clamped down. So while they have a whole level, grade one, where supposedly at the end of this counseling, you can talk to anyone about anything on any subject, anytime. Rubbish. This is the dike. This is what I said was the schizophrenic cult. What they publish and the actuality are, are a duality, dynamically opposed. Do you agree, Ron? I do agree totally. I do agree totally. And uh, this idea of writing up knowledge reports, the people who do it are proud of themselves that they do it. And in other words, it's, they're indoctrinated so much that they think they're doing the proper thing across all dynamics, that they wrote up their own father or mother or brother or friend, skipped the consequences. They wrote it up and, gee, I'm, I'm a real good Scientologist. I, I tell you, it's just, it's mind boggling, but it's true though. It, but what is also mind boggling is that this entity can endure while di dynamic, diametrically opposing the family unit. Yep, yeah. It's a cult of family destruction. Especially <clears throat> if you walk out. And they're going to keep any of your family in. And they're going to punish you with the dirty word disconnection. Yep. Yeah, and it's, I know that I had a call from an attorney. I tried to get in touch with my son when I first left, and they put an attorney on the phone with me, and um, we were talking, and finally he, I complained about what was being done, the disconnection, and he says, well, you knew that this was going to be so. You knew this all along. Let me tell you something. If when I got in Scientology, they told me all these things, that you're going to kowtow, or if you don't, we're going to take your family away from you. and say, you know what? Fuck you. I'm not joining this outfit. That would have been the end of it. That would have been the end of the entire thing. No, they didn't tell me, and they don't tell other people. They, what they call, love bomb you. Uh, they have, oh, you're such a wonderful person. If you do this course, it's going to help everybody in your community. And it gives you all this bullshit that you think, man, I've never had this much nice words said about me. Well, I, I'm, it, it, it pushes you in the direction of wanting to do it. They don't say to you, listen, you come in now, you're going to do this course. Once you're a Scientologist, if you get out of line, we're going to make you give up all your friends and your family. I think most people would say, are you out of your mind? Get lost. And they walk out the door. It's very nicely concealed. And the front that they put on with their 
It's, a, it's not called biblical. What, what is it called? Like holy, with their scripture. It's written so nice, you think, wow, this, this is a great outfit, you know. You can speak freely. You have inalienable rights, rights that can't be taken away. Wow, what a great outfit. And it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. I'll tell you what I saw one time. And by accident, and this is in Reading, Pennsylvania, there was a guy there, Walter Good, and he was a weightlifter. And this is back, I guess, in the 70s. He was in his 70s at that point. And he showed me a book that he got. He went to the 1936 Olympics, which were held in Germany. And he showed me a public relations book that was about the Nazi party. And if you were to read this, just go through all the pages. As a matter of fact, one page, it showed Hitler having some cocktails, like a martini, with some other people smiling, you know. And his dog was there, and you think, wow, they're doing good. They built the Autobahn. This is a good outfit. That's public relations. What you saw in that book didn't exist in real life. He had a copy of that book. I wish I still had it. I, I took it, and he, he let me take it and read it, and I gave it back to him. But uh, this is... Look, I'm, I'm not saying that the Church of Scientology is like the Nazi Party. I'm just saying that they used a public relations front to be something that they weren't in people's eyes. And this is what the church does. Because these things, like disconnection and forced abortions, that's bad stuff. And they make people do it. Well, the good news is their power is diminishing. Yes. The internet, every single day, every hour, their Facebook groups, blogs, message boards, Tony Ortega's blog, YouTube, Twitter, oh, God, the cult of losing the war on Twitter. There are people joining in left, right, and center, tweeting every second of every hour. More of their dark secret places are outed. Look, 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 look at what we've just talked in the last, last several minutes, last hour, whatever. It's the toothpaste cannot be put back in the tube. Right. The secrets are out, and their power and their clout is diminishing. I can't wait for the next section. So the good news is, all you Scientology watchers, they are on a decline. You can sense when something is declining or shrinking. And Mike Rinder's blog, Mike Rinder blog, will show you very clever analysis of statistics. Yeah. So let's hope that these this constant destruction of families, let's hope that this has a finite shelf life and an expiration date. <laughs> I'll vote for that, Karen. Okay. And I think we've made our point. What do you think? Yes, I think I think we made a point. And I would appreciate it if people who agree with us or who want to help out in this would become patrons and also help get more subscribers to my site as well as Tony Ortega as well as Mike Rinder and all the other people out there who are putting up uh, spots on the Internet so people can hear about these various abuses and get enlightened to it and avoid getting involved and living your own happy life in the world that we live in and helping people. Well, like I have a, a simple philosophy that I try to live by, and it's only two things. And on a daily basis, I try to do this. Help somebody, help something. I know you do a hell of a lot of helping something because you got birds, dog, cats, and that sanctuary. If I were a bird, I'd live at your place, I got to tell you. <laughs> it's just it's just wonderful. I've been there and I've seen it. Anywhere from finches to cockatoos, parrots, you name it. And just it's wonderful, you know, but uh, you're helping somebody. You help people, too. I know that. You've helped people who have escaped. You've helped them with money and, you know, support. It's appreciated by me, i, I got to tell you. And uh, anyway, if you like what, well, what I I'm... I have three, three dogs, three cats, 
and 65 birds, but the birds mostly uh, little Australian finches are only like two inches long. I know. And it's 35 birds are just the Australian finches. I have outdoor, I have the aviaries are in the patio. Yeah. Do you want to see one of my dogs? Yeah, bring it on. Okay, here, Sebastian, come. Sebastian. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. This is Sebastian. Hold, <laughs> hold him up a little higher. See. No. Sebastian, come. come. <laughs> Bring Can it. You hey, there you go. There you go. Get it in the center of the screen where your face is now. Because we, we. There you go. All right. <laughs> He's a Russian wolfhound. I know, and I remember when I stayed at your place a couple of years ago. He came in. I was sleeping, and all of a sudden, I wake up and I see this dog sniffing at my nose to see if I was okay. And then he walked out of the room. Look at that. <laughs> all right. I have well, a white one too, Stefan. Right. Just, I, I was. He's a wonderful dog. He's they're, they're a one-year-old. All, he's yeah. a one-year-old. Okay. Listen. Okay. So we'll end off with canine hugs and <laughs> hugs to you, Ron, and lovely okay. to chat with you. Hope to see you again. Bye, Good. bye, everybody. Uh, bye, bye. And from me, Ron Miscavige. This is Life After Scientology. I will see you on the next interview. Bye, bye for now.